So we talked in the past about sfumato and chiaroscuro, and you'll remember that chiaroscuro is um, a very intense lighting situation with uh, intense contrast, whereas fumato, there are a lot more um, subtle transitions between lights and darks. And so you can see here this painting, uh, I just am now working on my hands and face. Um, these are more of a sfumato kind of situation because I'm kind of lit from above in a very even way. Um, and so instead of doing the entire painting with the glazing method, I did the first layer with um, Alla Prima. And after that, I'm gonna switch over to the glazing method for the upper layers. And the reason for that is that with this um, kind of smoother transition in the, um, in the lights and darks, between the lights and darks, it's easier to get that sort of creamy look for the skin or for whatever you're painting, kind of a smoother uh, look where you get very subtle um, transitions from one section to the other, which I did with a lot of you know, white paint mixed in with my, um, my browns and my black. Um, and on top of that, I will now completely stop using white um, when I get into the cold layer and the uh, warm layer. And so this is very much like what we did in the last um, in the last project, except for this one, we are using white in the, in the beginning. So in this first, this here, this very first one, it is only um, white, black, raw umber, and burnt sienna. So the, I'm still only using the browns and blacks in the first, um, in the very first um, layer. And so you can see in the lips it almost looks sort of orangey, but I didn't add any actual orange or uh, red paints here. It's just because the burnt sienna has sort of an orange quality to it um, anyway. So these are just basically achromatic colors, um, browns and blacks and whites. Okay, now in the next layer I'm going to be doing the cold layer um, just as I would have had I been just doing the glazing method all along. So um, when I say I painted Alla Prima, what I mean is that I included I included white with this, okay? So now I'm completely getting rid of the white. There'll be no more white um, for the rest of this painting. No more white paint pigment. I'm just going to use translucent paints moving forward here, and um, I'll show you what happens next. So in the first layer um, where I did Alla Prima for my underpainting, I um, tried to get the paint as thin and smooth as I possibly could because now that I'm going to be going over this with just translucent um, paint, I don't want something like what well, you can see um, here. There's little bits of paint kind of sticking up a little bit and the translucent paint will just settle um, around these ridges and that'll be a problem, right? So we do want this to be as smooth and flat as possible. And so what you can do, if you do have a little bit of um, um, texture here, which is pretty much inevitable when you're working with um, Alla Prima, when you're working with white, because it just it's just um, opaque and thick, right? And so no matter how much scumbling you do, you probably still have a tiny bit of ridges. And so one thing you can do is take your medium um, and just before you do the next layer, just give it a coat of medium to try to fill in those ridges with something clear and create a more flat surface from which to paint off of. So I'll finish that in a second. I've already done it to the face, so the face is ready for the cold layer. And it's just going to be like in the last project where I'm only going to be using cold colors and they're only going to be using translucent colors. So um, I lost my scraper, so my, my palette is quite a mess, but um, I'm just going to be using blues, greens, um, and purple for the um, next layer. None of these, none of these warm colors. Um, I'm going to cover them up with my hand um, since, I, since I can't scrape them off. Um, okay, so we're only going to be using the cold colors and no white in the next section. And as soon as I'm done um, adding the cold layer to the face, I'll show you um, where I am. Okay, now I've added the cold um, layer to the face. You can tell it's a big difference between the hand and the face. Now the hand looks super orange. I haven't done the hand yet, obviously. Um, you can see in the face I added purple to the lips, some cerulean across the teeth, cerulean, cerulean, purple, um, little greens and purples throughout here, a little cerulean on the highlights, down the highlights here, purple, 
tiny bit of green, um, and lots of, there's actually a blue kind of across the whole top, cerulean, it's really light, um, super, super light, okay? So remember, I just used my blues, and um, I mixed the purple and um, greens. Okay, I will do the hand tomorrow. I can't do it today because I have to wait for the medium to dry. Okay, now I did the cold layer on the hand. You can see there's some green that came across here, around the knuckles and here. A lot of purple across the fingers. Um, mostly purples and greens in here. I don't have a whole lot of blue because nothing is in super dark shadow, but I have a little bit across here where the that leaf overlaps the hand and casts a shadow. Okay, I finished this. I um, did the cold layers on the face and the hand, and then I did the warm layers. You can see added a bunch of uh, um, reds, oranges, yellows, and now the painting is done. Okay, um, so remember this process is almost exactly like what you did in the last project with the chiaroscuro glazing method. This is just one in which the base layer is an alla prima and very, um, try to keep it flat and not bumpy. And then the pre uh, layers after that are done exactly like the last project where you do the um, cold colors, let them dry, then you do the warm colors, let them dry, and then you go back and do anything else that might be missing.